Hi guys! Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is something that one of you guys has requested in the comments down below and it's gonna be how I studied for pure chemistry. Um, before I start the video, I wanted to talk about why I didn't upload for the past 2 or 3 weeks. Um, if you guys don't know, um, Chinese New Year just uh, ended. So Chinese New Year is this it's basically a lunar new year and the Chinese celebrate it for 15 days so I spent the 15 days um, um, celebrating and I had my part-time job so that took out a lot of my time so that's the reason why the last two weeks had no videos but I'm back and I'm gonna be doing something that you guys wanna see today and it's gonna be a how I study pure chemistry if you guys don't know, I got A1 for my O levels in pure chem so today I'm just gonna give you some of my advice. The first tip I have for you guys is to understand the format of the paper. I'm filming this in February so it's been about three months since I last did chemistry um, and the last time I did it was for O level so I might be a bit um, rusty or if there's new syllabus I may not know who knows um, but for me there was a paper one the MCQ paper which was 40 marks? 40 marks? Yeah. And then um, there was the paper 2 with the structure in the essay questions and then it's the practical. So understand what's going on, what's happening, what is tested in the practical, um, what they're looking for in the MCQ, what happens in the essays and whatnot. Know what you're supposed to write because some um, like the structure and the essay questions in the paper 2 are looking for different things. So understand what they want. The structured questions want a bit less explanation, I guess, a bit more brief. The essay is a little bit more detailed answers. So understand what's happening. Don't go into it blur. Um, yeah. So that's the first tip. The second tip that I have for you guys is on practical. So um, practical is really a lot of a lot of marks, it is quite a number of marks to give up if you don't do it properly. I think it's 20% do it properly. That's my that's my tip. So um, don't think that it's a waste of time when your teachers bring you for practical lessons. Don't just sit there and say, oh, this is this is going to be simple on the day itself. It's not. So for practical, there's experiments like titration, redox titration, qualitative, QA qualitative analysis. Um, and many many more basically like salts and acids and alkalis and pH and all these weird things write it all like no one's being tested for practical practical is tested quite early in the year in October I think so write it all down no one's being tested don't study all the extra <laughs> content that you don't really need unless you have extra time to do it it's always safer to study more but if you don't have that much time um, don't focus on the things that is not tested. So when your teacher goes through practical, write down all the notes in a single full scrap report and put it all into it. Um, put it all together so when you study for practical, it's all there. Don't waste your 20% of your grade for practical. The third tip I have for you guys is to understand the content. It's a very, very simple tip. If you don't understand the content, you're not going to do well. But um, like I said in my previous video of my tips for secondary school students um, is to ask. If you don't understand, ask someone. Don't be afraid to ask. Um, pure chem is difficult for everybody. Nobody finds it easy. Um, I struggled <laughs> quite a bit. Um, some of my friends um, failed in sec 3 and then they got really really good grades or whatever. So we all struggled with it. Just ask questions. If you are unsure, um, if you don't know what's happening in class, raise up your hand and ask your teacher will be more than happy to answer. Yeah, if you are at home doing self-revision or you're doing homework and you don't understand something, write the question down, go to class, ask your teachers, ask your friends that know the content, don't ask people that don't know and then they give you some weird answers, ask someone that understands and um, when you get your answers, write it down somewhere. If you write a lot of notes, um, on your own. Write it in your notes so that you can always come back to it. Um, as I said in my previous video, find your groove. Um, what is the best way for you to study might not be the best way someone else studies. I don't write notes. So which brings me on to my next point. My next point is to 
ask questions that are not in syllabus because in pure chem they don't only ask you what is in your textbook um, your essay questions are most likely gonna be something that you cannot find in your textbook so um, your database questions basically um, you can ask you things that you don't know so I'll ask things outside um, what's in your textbook what's in your syllabus basically I'm not saying that they're gonna test you some JC knowledge some university knowledge just um, broaden your understanding in certain things just ask and then just arrow to your textbook or in your notes. So I'm going to show you what I did in my textbook. I have it right here. As you can see, I read write a lot. Like as you can see, I've got all these post-its for all the important stuff. Um, always write notes on yourself, especially, you know, for, um, I don't know if you use the same textbook as me, but on page 201, look at the amount of post-its I put on for extra information. So this is just basically all the different outsides. Um, then the color of um, copper, copper salts are all here. I wrote it all down. Everything and anything I write down. So um, notes. I just screw it onto my textbook. So when I come at a study it's all there. I don't have to go to a separate notebook or whatever, like crystallization, how you do it. Everything is not really in the book, but I just write it all down. Yeah. So, ask questions outside of syllabus, write it in your textbook. Um, if you don't understand something, write it in your textbook or in your notes. The next tip that I have for you guys is to connect content between the chapters or in the chapters so basically you can say like something like ionic bonding can connect to electrolysis or um, as oxidation and reduction can um, connect to electrolysis organic chem can um, connect to uh, covalent, covalent and metallic bonding anything you have to see and find that connection. When you connect everything together, you will find out that there's actually a lot that you can connect. And when you connect things, um, questions um, set by Cambridge are not always set like this question is for this chapter. So they can always like connect questions between chapters. So like, um, speed of reaction can be connected to kinetic particle theory. They can. They can connect everything together and that makes your chat, your questions very very confusing. So you need to know how to connect um, the chapters. Um, and you need to... So it's just basically having a knowledge of chemistry and not a knowledge of kinetic particle theory and bonding and electrolysis. You need to have a knowledge of the whole subject. Um, you need to know what's happening everywhere. <laughs> just not focus on one chapter and one chapter only so yeah and the next tip I have for you guys is to practice practice and practice so yeah I have two booklets um it has my school name but I graduated so I don't really care too much basically so these two booklets from my school um it's just like worksheets and like practice that we can do for both of them as you can see do it and then there's also TYS they are meant to help you practice TYS is very very useful and what I did is I did TYS a few times I did the topical one and then I did the yearly ones and then I did the yearly one again before the exam so do it as many times as you possibly can. I know there's a lot of subjects, so you can't focus all your time on chemistry, but um, do it as many times as you can because you will find out what is going to be tested. And Cambridge always repeats questions, especially for MCQs and structured questions. You will see repeat questions in your paper. So if you do get to ask a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of times, you'll recognize all these familiar questions. My O-Level had a number of repeat questions, so 
do your TOS, practice and practice and practice, know the answers and like how you should phrase your answers because even if you understand and you don't know how to phrase your answers properly or like scientifically phrase them, you should, you won't get the mark. So know the right terms and phrases that you're supposed to write in your answers and that can only come through practice. So practice, practice and practice. The last tip that I have for you guys is to prioritize. So um, this can be within the subject and also outside the subject. So I'm going to talk about outside the sub uh, within the subject first. So in my textbook, um, what I mean by prioritize is okay. So in chapter one, I'm going to show you chapter one. Um, I write down. I put a post-it in front of every chapter, as you can see here. It says study from binder, which is this over here. The notes that the teachers gave, and I say, uh, I put one star and easy. So it's just telling me that this chapter, kinetic particle theory, I find very easy, very simple, and I don't need to spend a lot of time on it. But if I go to other chapters like um, chapter 15, electrolysis, I have a post it here, and it's five stars and it says hard. So it's just telling me that I need to spend a bit more time to read through this chapter and to revise this chapter before an exam. Um, metals, uh, so put 5 stars and work hard. And then some other chapters like oxidation and reduction, I put 4 stars and medium. So it's just telling me the difficulty that I find in the certain chapters. Um, the teacher can say that it's easy but you can find it really hard. So um, metals is actually a really really simple chapter but I think that there was a lot to memorize and that would give me a lot, I will need a lot of time to memorize all the things in the chapter of metals. So I put 4 stars in medium so that um, before the O levels, I know that I need to spend a bit more time on it. So you need to prioritize, don't spend all your time doing the easy chapters like kinetic particle theory or like salts or like more concept. Um, prioritize them properly so that you don't waste your time. And I don't want to make this video too long, but to prioritize outside the subject as well. Um, you have many many subjects, English, your mother, um, pure chem, um, your other sciences, your maths, um, if you take POA, um, whatever subjects that you take, there's many many subjects. Don't spend all your time on this one subject. If you're not good at pure chem, it's okay. Just put in the minimum effort and do okay and focus on other subjects so that they can also do well. Don't only focus on pure chem and then fail with other subjects. That is not what I'm trying to say here. So prioritize properly, don't um, spend too much time on one, on one subject and neglect the others. Um, yeah, you want to get good grades? You can do it. And my parting advice for this video is to keep going. It was not an easy um, time for me. Some of my friends got F9 in Sec 3 and they got A2 at whatever. So it's always doable. Um, pay attention in class. Um, try your best. Um, really, really, it's not an easy road ahead, but it's really, really worth it if you do well. So um, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe there. So don't forget to leave a comment down below for you and see next. I will do them and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.